As I've declared, we're, we've stepped into a new year full of potential, full of promises, probably full of New Year's resolutions. I find they don't last. I find the convictions that you fan and allow God to stir up in your heart are the ones that you will act on this year. And uh, our God Word for 2023 is supernatural. Supernatural interventions, supernatural overflow, supernatural above and beyond. Supernatural. God is going to show Himself in the midst of a darkened world. He's going to gloriously shine upon the lives of those that trust in Him and dare to rise in faith. And so leading up to our launch Sunday, the first Sunday of February, our vision day, well, I'm going to share with you some messages on the supernatural. Now, I just dare to believe God's going to not only shake you, but soften you, prepare you, challenge you about living the overcoming life, the supernatural life that Jesus promised to us. He paid the price, gave His life that we might live above and beyond the overcoming life. And so this message today I've called Supernatural Questions. I want you to ask yourself five questions. See whether you're ready for a supernatural change in your life. Come with me to Joshua chapter 5, verse 10 to 13. Joshua 5, verse 10 to 13. This is a brilliant chapter. It's very real in my life at present because it was a turning point in the history of Israel. They'd come out of Egypt, they'd wasted a generation in unbelief and now they're at the borders of their inheritance and uh, Jericho's there. And they've got to see something change. And God has to teach them, you'll never take the fullness of my grace and overcoming life without a supernatural walk of faith. So let me read this to you. Joshua 5, verse 10 to 13 says this. Now the children of Israel camped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of that month at twilight on the plains of Jericho. They'd crossed over Jordan. They were now camped on the plains of Jericho, on the outskirts of everything God's promised them. And they ate of the produce of the land on the day after the Passover, unleavened bread and parched grain. On the very same day, then the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land. It wasn't really the fullness of the land. All they ate was unleavened bread and parched grain. It's not really what God promised, a land overflowing with milk and honey. The manna ceased when they started to eat the produce of the land and the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate of the food of the land of Canaan all that year, all that year. On the outskirts, plains of Jericho, eating like almost rations. They're in the land, but pretty basic. All of that year. And it came to pass when Joshua went down and stood by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said, Are you for us or for our adversaries? Then, became, then began a holy exchange that changed everything about the future and history of Israel from that time on. And so let me give you five questions out of this passage that you have to ask yourself if you want to step into a season of the supernatural that you've heard preached for a million years but never stepped into it. Here's the first question. Why did Joshua stand looking at Jericho for a year? What the heck's that all about for a year? Why didn't they, the day they cross over, have Passover, 
deal with all that and then say, all right, we're ready. It, a whole year they stood on the outskirts, the plains of Jericho, eating basic rations. Why did Joshua stand looking at Jericho for a year? My question, of course, is to you and me. Why have we taken so long to dare to step up into a supernatural realm? And here's some of the reasons I think maybe. The first one is they were satisfied with surviving in the land, not thriving. On the outskirts, on the peripheral. As a pastor of a church again now, it saddens me to watch people sit in the back row, come in late, go out early, sitting on the outskirts of all God's promised and never really committing to breaking through. Okay, it boggles my mind. Where do you get that from? We well, certainly don't get it from God. Surviving, satisfied, but not thriving. Another reason why maybe it took them a year is they wanted the blessing of God without the battle required. That's one of the great things I see in people. They come out for prayer, but they won't go home and do the battle. They won't press through and break through. They want someone else to do it all and give it to them on a platter. They believe the promise. They just don't want to overcome the problem. Fringe dwellers. Fringe dwellers never possess in life. You got to 2020, make up your mind. I'm going right down, middle of everything, center of where the action is, whatever the commitment is, I'm making a commitment. I'm full on, full in. That's how you live in the blessing of God. Fringe dwellers never possess. I'll tell you why. Because your great harvests are just the other side of Jericho. Whatever your battle is, whatever your Jericho is that's been holding you back, please say, God, I'm going to break through this year. I want the supernatural power of God to break this habit in my life, break this behavioural pattern that I got from my parents that's ruin, ruining my marriage, break this slack life that I've been living on the periphery, on the outskirts of religion and never breaking through to see the power of God at work in me and my children. Hear what I'm saying? I hope I'm get, getting through. And this is only the first question. Second question. See, I want you to come on a journey into the supernatural with me. Second question. Why did Joshua stand alone before Jericho? Here's this guy on his own. I'll tell you why. You've got to learn, if you're going to live by faith, sometimes you have to stand alone. When no one else believes, you've got to keep believing. When no one else thinks it's possible, you've got to believe in the impossible. Can you say amen? One thing I've learned over my journey of trying to live by faith is to get to the day of victory, faith has three days three days. You've got to get these three days because if you're going to get to the day of victory by faith, you will go through these three days. The first day is the day of fear. The day of fear. You see, faith has a shadow. It's called fear. Whenever you step out in faith, fear always screams like a stuck pig. Always the scream of fear. You're going to mess up. You're going to make a fool of yourself. Stop. Some good meaning, well-meaning people say you've got to face your fears. I dispute that vehemently. I think if you face your fears, the devil's got you obsessed with the problem. I find the Bible teaches don't face your fear. Face the promise of God, the rising sun, the glorious light of God. If
going around looking for some mad prophet. Uh, you know, want to see some uh, dream that's uninterpretable and carry on like that. No, no, you stand on the Word of God. Unshakable, unbreakable, irresistible, irrevocable Word of the living God to your heart. And in days of silence, you make the noise. The confession of your faith, you make the noise. You'll overcome the enemy every time. And the third one, firstly, days of fear. That'll strike you, try and freeze you in your tracks. Days of silence. God's not talking to you. You've missed it. No, no. I know what I stand on. And I, God's still talking, but He's talking through me now. My confession of faith. The third one are days of loneliness. You've got to learn this. Not everyone will stand with you in your day of challenge. Not everyone will. And there you are alone, standing before the invincible Jericho. The legend of Jericho has been heard by everybody. And here you are standing, looking up at this impenetrable city, daring to believe that God will do a, an amazing victory. Hey, listen, stand firm. Don't run with the crowd who want to talk about every stupid thing. No, you stand in your faith. You have a strong conviction. I've heard from God. And even when no one seems to be blowing your trumpet, you dare to believe God has spoken, shall He not do it? God is not a man that He should lie. Neither the Son of Man that He has to repent. I made a mistake. Has He spoken? Shall He not do it for you? Learn to stand through the days of faith until the day of victory breaks forth supernaturally in your life. Here's the third question. Why did Joshua, the leader of this great nation of millions, why did he listen to the voice of a stranger? on the plains of Jericho. Why would he listen? I'll tell you why. And this is a powerful principle for you today. When Jericho is shut up, look for God to show up. He wasn't, this is such a powerful thing. Joshua wasn't there looking at Jericho saying, man, this problem, this challenge, we can't. I don't know if there's a crack in the wall. I don't know how and, and all the stuff going on. No, when Jericho shut up, which it was, look for God to show up. And so here's Joshua standing there. He said, God, I can't do this alone. I'm looking for you to show up. And a man shows up with a sword in his hand. I lo love that. The other thing about this is, when God shows up, listen, listen. Stop ranting on about the challenge and the, you know, the 40 years you've been faithful. No, no, when God shows up in a season of the supernatural, shut up and listen, listen for God. Here's another reason why Joshua listened to a stranger is you know when it's God. People that are open, know when God shows up and speaks because heaven speaks differently. I think that's a reason Joshua had to get away from the motley crew, the mob of Israel, go stand before Jericho and say, God, speak to me. He was already waiting for God to show up. Get yourself aside and God, speak to me. I'll listen. I'm waiting for you to tell me because heaven speaks differently. Can I challenge you with a little thing? If you want to live supernatural, learn to receive revelation. If you want to live supernaturally, learn to hear from God. Learn to receive revelation because heaven speaks from above and not beneath. Very important. All right, next question. This must be probably number four, the fourth question. Why did Joshua act on this strategic word? 
given to him by the angel of the Lord. Well, here's the first reason. He had no other option. When you face a Jericho or a mountain or an impossible, impossible challenge, you have no other option but to get a strategy from God. Don't run around and get the counsel of a million different people. Hear from God and know that there is no other option. Significant battles always need a supernatural strategy. Significant battles always need a supernatural strategy. And so here he is. He's been waiting for God to show up. God shows up and he listens. And the angel of the Lord gives him a strategy that's as as weird and as dumb and as stupid as any man could ever ask for. But Joshua hasn't come this far to argue with the Lord from his reason. He already knows the challenge of Jericho is too big for a dumb little person like me and like you. It's too big. And so he listens. He had no other option. He knew this battle was going to have to have a supernatural element to it. And so when God gave him the strategy, he owned it. He owned that strategy as his God word. Joshua believed his God word. It went beyond his natural reasoning. It went beyond his capacity in the flesh and physical strength. It went so far beyond, it was absurd. But he did one simple thing. He owned his God word. I'm daring you to own your God word this year. I'm daring you to break into a supernatural realm and a zone in your life you've only ever dreamt of, wished you could get to. No, own your God word. Says the same of Abraham. Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. And by his faith he possessed, became the father of blessing. He went forth not knowing, he just had a God word. He believed his God word. You hear what I'm saying? Here's the fifth question I've got to ask you. Why did all the people agree with Joshua about the stupid plan? Here's a whole nation saying, we'll do it. Because like Joshua, they knew they'd come to a place where they needed faith. When you need faith, faith is the plan. Did you hear me? When you need faith for healing, faith is the plan. When you need faith for increase in resource, faith is the plan. When you need faith to restore a marriage or a broken down relationship, faith is the plan. There's no other way to break through in life. This is the supernatural life. And here's a reason why all the people embraced the crazy plan Joshua brought back to them. And that is this, people long to live by faith. Everyone watching, joining with me, listen, there is deep within your heart a longing to live by faith, to live in the supernatural realm that God promises to every person. And the funny thing is in church, people know when faith is present. People know when God is there and His power is there because it produces faith. And people know when it's in church and when it's not. I don't care how fancy the presentation and the smoke machine and everything else is. If faith's not there, the place is dead. And people know when faith is there for the supernatural. Let me prophesy to leaders that are watching. People are fed up with living on the plains of Jericho. Near enough to smell the fruit of the land, but not not having broken through by faith to eat and enjoy it. People are sick of that. 
They're sick of performance churches. They're sick of churches that do everything so slick and have segues for everything and music that just fills in the gaps. No, no, they want God. And they know when faith is there, when the power of God is present and people want that in their lives. They're sick of feeding on the fringe of blessing. Listen, routine religion and ritual is not our inheritance or our reality. Routine religion is boring and it kills the soul. The supernatural power and presence of God is our inheritance and our reality. And when people taste that, they want more of it. I want to live in the... Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me from sin. Break the chains and power of the evil one. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and set me free to walk on paths of righteousness into the blessing and fulfilment and inheritance you've prepared for those who love you. I thank you, Jesus. The miracle is mine today. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, bless you. Have an incredible week in the name of Jesus. Prepare yourself for supernatural interventions and we'll see you next week. God bless you.